the Baltimore Museum of Industry was um, created in 1977 as a project of the then mayor, William Donald Schaefer, who felt that as industry was leaving Baltimore, it was really um, necessary to capture the history of industry because of Baltimore's importance in the industrial age in the, in the history of this country. One of the most interesting, especially for our visitors, is our print shop. We have a print shop that has printing presses that go from the Civil War all the way up to the Linotype, which was invented in Baltimore. And we are lucky enough to have a volunteer who actually is one of the original Linotype operators. He operated the Linotype for the Baltimore Sun. Our machine here is a uh, Model 8. The museum's had it for a while, about 10 years or so. and. Uh, it came from the Washington, the Bureau of Engraving over in Washington where they print money. This is not used in that, that's a different process altogether, printing money is altogether different. What it does, it, you assemble molds, shapes of the letters with the keyboard, and once you get those, then you send them over to the casting part of the machine and we actually cast lines of type. And they would look like this. This is what a typical line would look like. No more single pieces, no more B-A-L-T like that, no more of that. It's one piece at a time, because what we're doing, we're assembling shapes or molds of these letters, and then we put hot metal into all the molds at one time, and we end up with one piece of a line of type, and it's called, the machine is called a line of type, okay? Thomas Edison, when he saw this machine, he declared it to be the eighth wonder of the world. He saw it operating, you know, one of the first ones, and... Okay, okay, here we go. A M E. Elevator is going to come down in a minute. Coming down right here. Okay. All right. All right. I'll make a proof of you proof of this for you. Come over here to the proof press. Roll some printing ink on. Pick out a piece of paper. I guess the white will do. And put it on top. And there we go. A line of 18 point type. From 1452 to 1886, the system never changed much. It was, it was always the little letters made up ahead of time, put in the wooden cases. The same as Gutenberg when he set his Bible up, the last, in 1886, the last things they were setting up then, it was the same. But this machine changed all that. This machine made the typesetting much faster, easier in, in, the, in the sense that it was faster. The newspapers, I mean, they had a lot of, a lot of hands working on that paper to get that out the next morning. That was every day, you know, every day. And a another thing I didn't mention was after that paper was finished for the day, somebody, again, had to come and put all the type back in the case. This, all they did was melt it down and make some of those uh, pigs or bars that go on there and just um, keep, keep using the metal over and over and over all the time. And, of course, the co computer came along, and that's even bigger. I mean, that's even more, I mean... Everybody's a typesetter now. You, you set up your computer, sit there and type out what you want, hit a button and prints out a copy and you're happy as can be. The computer one day, that'll be an antique. That'll be a museum and people be coming through like we are here and say, you mean they used to do it with like this in the old days? Yeah, that's the way it used to be. When, when they were writing these books by hand, when they were writing out, the scribes were writing out one book at a time, took them probably a year to make one book. By the time they got done, uh, the, the, the story was probably changed, <laughs> but it was, so, it was so slow, we need a faster way. Well, when this came along, they, they, when somebody talked about having pieces of metal with letters on them and putting them together and making a book, I'm sure it sounded crazy. They can't do something like that, you know, that's not going to be possible. But then they, they did that, and they did the next step, and the next step, and that's what life is. And each step is, for one thing, is to make it faster. Turn this switch off, close this up. Toolbox full of junk, glasses. Here's your hat, what's your hurry?
You can watch American Artifacts every Sunday at 8 a.m., 7 p.m., and 10 p.m. Eastern Time on C-SPAN 3's American History TV. For schedule information and to view programs, visit cspan.org history.